Hello YouTube, Sandre here. I don't use a script for most of my videos, but I think it's going to be very much apparent in this one because honestly, this is just going to be me rambling ad nauseum, if you will, about something that I've been thinking about for a while. You see, more than uh, three months ago, I think, I had a conversation with some gentleman in a Discord server. I'm not going to say what server, and I'm not going to say who I had uh, the conversation with, but it did spark my uh, fancy regarding making this video. You see, these people argued that taxation is theft, and I've been trying to analyze this proposition, this claim, and I've been trying to entertain it as much as I can for over three months now, I think. I just can't. Like, I legitimately just cannot do it. There is no way for me to understand this claim whatsoever. Which is kind of unusual. In most cases, I can at least understand some basic logic of a claim, but this one, I just... I just don't get it. I cannot find any kind of logical justification for that claim. I guess I could find a logical justification, be it perverted logic, uh, regarding the claim that taxation is perhaps extortion, but I don't understand the claim that it's theft. But let's say that you have uh, an ANCAP, who doesn't argue that taxation is uh, necessarily theft, but that it is uh, extortion instead. Again, I actually understand that claim more than the claim that it's theft. But even then, you have huge issues with that claim. And no matter how I twist and turn it, I just cannot get it to be true, regardless. You see, whenever I do a political compass test, I always end up in the libertarian area. I don't even get close to the middle of the y-axis, even. I'm very much anti authoritarian So, if the fundamental issue is regarding taxation and representation, I'm completely on board with that. I, I really am. If you want to argue that perhaps you're unjustly taxed, right on. Explain how that's the case and I, I will support you. But even though I am very much a libertarian according to any test that I take, I just cannot understand this claim that taxation would be theft or, at best, extortion. You see, a pretty common centerpiece of libertarian rhetorical strategy is that they usually refer to taxation as theft. Now, why they do this is pretty obvious. It makes their concern seem more important. It's no longer about policy, it's about raw justice. Usually, the argument boils down to that taxation is theft because it takes property from the unwilling. Again, it's not like I'm gonna take this apart in a methodical way. This really is just me rambling right now, but one thing that uh, ANCAPs, for instance, ignore when they spout this kind of nonsense is the role of democratic consent. You see, a tax is not some arbitrary imposition. Taxes are, in fact, in a way, kind of like a fee for a membership in a society. And in order to access all the services it offers, you have to pay for them. Thing is, though, whenever I try to explain this to, especially ANCAPs, it's like they put their hands on their ears and they go, la 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 la, can't hear you. You see, these people are usually perfectly fine with a private club that charges a fee for membership. And with this fee, you get benefits and amenities. Now, these very same people would also argue that the, the club has the right to charge whatever price it believes to be fair. And according to the principles of the free market, if you think they charge too much, you are perfectly free to renounce your membership and you can leave the club. What you are not free to do is to simply not pay, but also at the same time demand that you still be allowed to sit in the club and use its facilities. Neither do you have the freedom, if the club doesn't offer this option, that you may only use some of its services. You see, when it comes to the private market, these principles, they understand perfectly fine. 
But when you try to apply this to the government and show that no, it's the same mechanism at work here, you know? It may not be the same entity, but the principle is still the same. They usually just fucking screech at you and they call it theft. Or like I said, in the best case scenario, extortion. You see, the society you live in is kind of like the club. And to use its services, you have to pay the membership fee. And just like you can leave a club if you don't want to pay the exorbitant prices, if you will, you can leave this society and go and seek another one. Or maybe even start your own one. You see, these people like to bitch and whine about taxes and claim that they are the victims of oppression. Well, that we all are, really. But how many of these people get off their lazy fucking ass and actually, I don't know, start a ranch somewhere in some unclaimed land? Maybe start a town in some remote part of the world that nobody has claimed? Why don't these people just start in Capistan? But I guess it's so much easier to just bitch and whine, right? Not all things that are compulsory are necessarily theft. There's a compulsion that we have as biological beings to, you know, drink and eat and breathe. Would you argue that that's nature extorting us? Taxation, at least in a democratic society, is even less like extortion of any kind than your biological need to eat, drink, or breathe. Nature can demand these functions without your input, but in a democracy, you do have a say, whether you want to admit it or not. Do these people even understand what the government fundamentally is? It's the people. That's where the government, at least in a democracy, get its mandate from. And when these people rant about the government, what they actually are is ranting about their fellow citizens that they just don't agree with. A very ridiculous example is this one guy who argued with me that since there is a lack of consent in a sexual encounter that is considered rape, and as taxation happens without your consent, that is equivalent to rape. No, I'm not shitting you. Now, I have to tell you that if you honestly compare rape with taxes, you're kind of fucked up. I don't know, maybe you're speaking from experience, but in that case, you must have had a very positive rape experience, all things considered. No, taxes are not like rape. Now, is taxation the most efficient way for you on your personal level to finance the services that you want to use in society? No, of course not. But that's you. And like it or not, you're not special. You're just another cog in the fucking machine that we call society. Deal the fuck with it. Are you going to use all of the services that the government provides from your tax money? No, of course not. But guess what? You are going to use some of them. And if you don't want to pay for any of them, like I said before, you are free to uproot yourself and plant yourself somewhere else, in some unclaimed part of the world. There you can start and cap it down. And we'll see how long that's going to last. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't last a fucking year. So yeah, so yeah, I can understand the frustration of paying for certain services for your taxes that you're not going to use yourself. But you are going to use some of them. At least at some point. And why we can't have more individual taxes simply comes down to practicality. You cannot have an organized society like we have with a tax system and having that tax system to be as fair as you want it to be. But guess what? That's where democracy comes in, and your ass can vote. Yes. You see, this agency is something that these people ignore time and time again when I argue with them. It's always the same shit. The government steals from me, you see. Well, how about you vote for a party that wants to abolish the government, I say. Well, I did, but they didn't win. Well, tough shit, my dude. That's how democracy works. You bitching the way you do about how you're apparently a victim of the system because God forbid you have to pay for some fucking services that you, that you may never use but might actually use at some point you don't know. And you demanding that, hey, the rest of us should just give up our fucking benefits in society because your ass doesn't want a government. That sounds kind of fucking entitled to me. Is it fun to pay taxes? No, of course not. 
Sometimes I don't like paying for my food because I think it's too... Sometimes I don't like paying for my bus card because I think it's too expensive. Sometimes I don't like paying my debts that I may... that I may have to a bank, let's say. Sometimes I don't like paying my insurance. But guess what? That's what I have to do because if I want the service, I have to pay for it. And for some reason, when it comes to the free market, that's just fine and dandy. But when it comes to a centralized power of any sort, even though it may actually be more efficient, well, fuck that shit. No, no, no. That's oppression. That's wrong. Even though at some point you're going to have to make that expense anyway. And it doesn't actually matter if it is to the government or to a private enterprise you pay the money. It doesn't actually matter if the bus car that you buy is from some government bus company or a private bus company. If you have to take the bus, you have to take the fucking bus. After the ANCAP or, I don't know, some other lunatic libertarian is done with their rant about how taxation is theft or, at the very least, extortion, they usually utter some phrase along the lines of how the free market is the natural state of affairs. Some even go so far as to argue that it will spontaneously arise, if only the economy is left to itself. Wrong. A free market is an infrastructure. It requires investments in order to be created and in order to be maintained. A lot of these people need a history lesson, but the problem is, even though I show them historical examples of what happens if you deregulate the market too much, they just keep ignoring it and say, well, that wasn't real capitalism. You know, it sure sounds like the rhetoric of some other group of people that the same ANCAPs or libertarians who are too fucking extreme often go on about. It, to someone like me, who is able to accept history for what it fucking is, you and commies going on about how, oh, it wasn't real communism. Real communism hasn't been tried. You sound the same to me as those people. Knock it the fuck out. You're embarrassing yourselves. The natural state of an unregulated economy has time and time again been shown to not be free competition at all. What you find is that you have established large powers who will do everything to suppress their competition. That what happens is you have monopolies of corporations that are built up and that stifles any actual competition. Yes, the ironic thing about the free market is in order to keep it as free as possible, you need regulation. And who's going to supervise that regulation? Oh yes, it's the government. And that requires, you guessed it, tax money. This historical fact is even admitted by the Cato Institute. You know, the libertarian think tank. So when it comes to this ridiculous fucking claim, just shut the fuck up already. Jesus fucking Christ. No. The free market will not remain free if it's left alone. It needs a supervising body. The most neutral supervising body would be the government. And the government, like anything else, doesn't come for free. Hence, you have to pay taxes, at least for that reason alone. Another thing I just realized is that these people don't understand human behavior at all, now do they? I mean, take the military, you know, w without taxes to support the military. Any country that didn't levy taxes would be very quickly overrun by its neighbors. Actually, you don't even need to go to that level, just on a personal level. These people seem to have an unrealistic expectation of, of how they would actually fare in a world without any kind of government. They all seem to believe that they personally would benefit in a world without government. Either because they are physically strong, or perhaps they're rich. Now, some of these people have argued with me and said that it wouldn't actually be uh, a, a complete wasteland where it's every man for himself because of something called customary law. The, the problem with the idea of a customary law is that it's not only unscalable, if, if the legal system is voluntary, you cannot collectively address any breaking of the customs upon which the customary law depends. <laughs> I just uh, I just got a funny uh, funny image in my head. Fall under a social contract because when you're born, you're kind of a weak bitch. 
if you were to go back to infancy, you know, let, let's say that you turned into an infant, but you, you, you could still talk, okay? You probably wouldn't say to your mother, hey, bitch, I want you to drop me in the forest because I want to fend for myself. I don't want to be under your tyranny, mother. We do have a social contract, and it is within our human psyche, if you will, that any strong person should be willing to make some sacrifices for weaker persons, because they were actually once weak themselves, and they will be again. Now, let's go to a more specific type of tax. Uh, let's talk about income tax, because that's the tax that these people have the biggest issue with, it seems. They argue that uh, the government doesn't have a right to tax you on your income. They have a right to their full income, they argue. Well, you pretty clearly don't have a legal right to your uh, pre-tax income. So, what you have left to argue is, well, it's an ethical right. It's unethical for the government to steal your income, if you will. The problem is, if you want to argue that every person has an ethical right or a moral right to their pre-tax income, the implication is that the distribution of those pre-tax incomes that the market assorts for you is just in a perfect manner. And that's just not true. There is really no ethical justification that the pre-tax income of the CEO of Amazon is so high that he now has a personal value that is equal to the BNP of smaller nations. When you have some factory workers in the same nation, the United States of America, who hardly make enough to support their families. There, there simply is no ethical justification for this dichotomy. And yet, you want to argue that every person has a moral or ethical right to their pre-tax income, which would mean that you would also have to defend that the market economy is perfectly just in the way it delivers each person's pre-tax income, and that what they get is exactly what they deserve. And this is clearly, objectively not true. Now, you would have to have your head pretty fucking far up your ass to argue that, that Mr. Bezos honestly deserves that kind of money, while John, for instance, who works at General Motors in Detroit, hardly gets enough to pay for his family's expenses. I'm sorry, but no, the financial market doesn't have its own ethical guideline. It's not this perfect, just system that knows best. And so to hold it above any taxation that a government levies against you is pretty damn illogical. Now, there's no doubt that you've probably worked hard for your income. But you see, you're not alone in society. Other people who also work hard also make a contribution. And your perfect market, if you will, does not take into consideration the morally significant factors that they bring when it comes to dividing the share of finances as to whom get what income. Basically, it's most likely the case that what you've gotten is not fair in comparison to what other people have gotten. And yet, that is what the market has brought you. Now, with this fact in hand, any rational person will now realize that it's, that it's not just a necessary evil of any lawmaker to tax pre-tax income, but it actually becomes ethically justified. Because of how the market fails to yield any kind of just distribution of income, the government should actively work to correct that distribution. Oh god, I know, I'm such a commie, right? Now, naturally, there is a practical limit. You know, economic realities will put a limit to how much the government can correct this, if you will. Your pre-tax income isn't actually the income you quote-unquote deserve. It's simply the income that has been given to you by an amoral market. 